and say go. How's it going, guys? I'm Cody. And this is Eli, and you are watching or listening to Commander Cafe. Where we need to tell Eli the difference between a record button and a play button, and that they do not do the same thing. <laughs> because I am not as used to recording software as I should be <laughs> by now. Um, so, today we have a deck tech for one of Cody's decks that I really wanted to see. However, every time I got into a game with him playing this deck someone just destroyed his commander every time i never actually got to play something for free off of his commander whoa, whoa, whoa. one time i don't even think it got destroyed it got countered yeah so, so however we're going to be talking about braids conjure adept because raids is bay i mean look at those big old eyes she is gorgeous anyway she is a ton of fun and lets everyone really get going and have a good time but you secretly get to take advantage of this stuff later in the game she, so one of my favorite things about this deck is um, that she changes the rules of the game and you get to build your deck around the new rules. Um, and I always like cards that do that. Like the mana curve. Um, anyway. Yeah. You, you basically <laughs> only have to get to four mana, play your commander, and then after that, you're just going to play one thing a turn, and that's all you really need with the way you had that deck. Yeah, so if you actually like look at the mana curve on Tapped Out, it's going to be way off what I would normally recommend, but Braids is going to let you do uh, let you do that and have a lot of fun doing it. Um, so, beginning of each player's upkeep, you're going to um, put an artifact, creature, or land from their hand into play. Um, so that's for everybody, um, unless you can flash her out, which the deck has a few ways to do so, you're getting the least amount of benefit because everyone gets to do that first. Um, but normally they're happy enough, well, maybe not my play group, but most people should be happy enough to get free stuff that they'll let her stick around. I know I would have been. <laughs> so what kind of stats do you have for your deck? So first off, we have card draw, which we have at 12 plus, um, ramp. We have six, board wipes, four, target removal, nine plus, clone uh, effects is four, and stealing effects is five, because that is always fun. So the card draw is going to be high. Um, it's higher than we normally do, mostly because it's par partly because it's mono blue, but secondly because I took back the ramp a bit because you don't need it in the deck. You need more card draw. You need cards in your hand to cheat out. Um, so we have a little higher there. So what kind of draw cards did you use? So first up, we have the two big ones. We have Blue Sun Zenith and Pool from Tomorrow, the big X ones. Um, so the reason these are important, and I have a few big cards like this that can't get cheated out with braids, is because you're saving so much mana with braids that you're able to dump them into these kind of effects and just draw like X cards with these and um, really get yourself going. Um, the next one is one of my favorite cards, should be in every blue deck that can run it with the mana cost, it, um, is Consecrated Sphinx. So you get to cheat this out with Braids. So you can get this out as early as turn five and then you're just going to town if someone doesn't answer it. Yeah, that is definitely a good card. You cheat it out so you don't even have to pay that six mana cost to put it out there and I have never seen a Consecrated Sphinx that made it onto the field not draw you at least like four, six cards. Yeah. One rotation at the table of a four person game and you have six cards. Uh, what else? Um, so we have a couple more interesting ones. We have Mystic Remora. Um, it's kind of the budget uh, Ristic Study, which Ristic Study is also in the deck. But if you don't have that and it is a little more pricey, this one's in here and it's a good budget option. Um, so it's Cume of Upkeep 1, so it can't stay around forever, but having it around for about three rotations is usually as good um, as a Ristic Study that sticks around because whenever an opponent casts a non creature spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays four. Um, they will have some extra mana because of raids, but four is a bit much to pay. Yeah, I don't really see people leaving four mana extra per spell that they want to cast, so I actually find this one to be slightly better mm -hmm. for the first few turns than Ristic Study is. 
Yeah, there, a lot of times they're willing to pay the one extra mana, especially late in the game. Um, but four, it's like four mana to stop someone from drawing a single card. That just seems like so much more and so much more taxing. So it's a great card, one of my pet cards that doesn't get enough attention, I don't think. Um, next up is one of the new cards from Rivals of Ixlon. Um, it's one of my favorite cards from that set, actually. It's uh, Nizahal Primal Tide. And he can't be countered, no maximum hand size, which I always love, especially in this deck. You're drawing a ton of cards, um, so you want to keep a hold of those. Um, I want as many of those maximum hand size, effect, hand size effects as I could. And then it also draws you cards whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell. So if they're cheating out their big creatures, they're probably going to have mana up for um, non-creature spells. It's going to let you draw more cards. And then you can discard three cards to um, exile it until end of turn, kind of flicker it out um, to protect it if you need to. Yeah. Overall, I find it... Normally, I wouldn't probably run it, but in something where I just get to play it for free if it's in my hand, then, yeah, I, I think it's definitely a worthwhile one, just like exactly. this last one that it's, I see yeah. on my list. This one I had a lot of fun with. I did get this out. Um, Mind's Dilation. It's an enchantment. Um, Five or seven mana total. You can't cheat it out because it's an enchantment. But the reason I count it in the card draw is because when I got it out, you're basically you're drawing cards from your opponent's deck. Is my way of thinking about it. And you're also cheating the mana cost. Um, so this did a ton of work in in a lot of games, and it's going in a lot more of my decks now because of it. Yeah, I I think that game you actually just skyrocketed after playing Mind's Dilation because you were able to just get all that value. Yeah, it's people like, oh, even, I people like don't want to stop playing their spells, so you get free spells. Mm -hmm. It doesn't count off the free drop but um, from Braids because that's not cast, but they're going to be doing more stuff. They want to keep playing, um, so they're willing to take the risk. Mm -hmm. So what kind of ramp did you have in the deck? So we're a little lower on ramp. We're at six, six of them. And I wanted a lot of two drops so that you can get Braids a turn early. Uh, and after that, she is your ramp. Um, I did include Dreamstone Hedron because you can cheat it out. Um, if you cheat out Dreamstone Hedron on turn five, then or turn four if you get Braids out a turn early even, you're off to the races with a bunch of these bigger cards. Mm -hmm. So we have Sapphire, Medallion, Felwar Stone, and cards like that. You want all the two mana drops that you can get. Yeah. Which sadly takes out some of the Signets, but there are a decent number. Uh, well, you can't run the Signets in this anyway. It's yeah. monocolor. Which but, is the reason. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I thought you meant, like, the uh, other way, taking them out. Yeah, no. Like, <laughs> uh, what about Board Wipes? Um, so we have, of course, Cyclonic Rift, the standard blue um, board wipe. But the issue I was running into was that blue has issues with hard board wipes. Um, so it can bounce, do a lot of mass bounce effects and stuff, but it has trouble just wiping the board. So because of that, I put in Oblivion Stone. And in addition to that, I have Ixodron. So Ixodron was in there with the idea that my opponents are casting or cheating out these big creatures. They're playing their biggest stuff early on, and then I'm going to turn them over and turn them into two twos. So it's like, oh, you just cheated out this giant creature. It's now two two if you take care of my creatures. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, along the same idea is Curse of the Swine. Let them cheat out these big things, and then exile them and turn them into two two pigs. Um, and it's just like the draw spells X mana you're going to have the mana left over. Yeah. Uh, realistically, I think Curse of the Swine is probably one of the like cards that I don't know how many people have heard about it. I know I only heard about it maybe two or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that's probably now one of my favorite blue cards besides like Rhystic and Consecrated Sphinx. It's definitely underrated. And like if you have the mana, it could be a one-sided board reset. Not mm -hmm. a wipe because they get the two twos, but... You're cheating out Eldorazi, like, in this deck. I don't care if you have a pig, like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, how about targeted removal? We've seen just how much you can take out half the field and turn it into pigs. Uh, what do you do when there's one big thing in your way? 
so we have a few ways to deal with um, cards here. Um, we have nine plus, and it's it's interesting because there's a few tricky things to do in this category. Um, a, like first time I pulled blades out, one of my one of the guys that we play with asked me how many counter spells I was playing. I'm only running two counter spells in the deck because the stuff put in from blades can't be countered. It's just put into play. It's not cast, and that's likely going to be their scariest stuff in hand. So I didn't want a lot of counter spells, um, and if you and the reason it's nine plus is because if you include the theft category in this, um, which it kind of is a targeted removal, then that number goes way up. Um, so first up, we do have one that we have, of course, counter spell, and then we also have cryptic command. Um, works as a counter spell, but also it's just so versatile. Such a good card can also temporarily get rid of something by just bouncing it to their hands. Mm -hmm. So, relatively helpful. Next up, we have Phyrexian and Jester. Um, this one's a lot of fun. Um, if you get them, because you can cheat it out, it's a creature, which is a big reason it's in here. You can cheat them out, and you still get his effect, um, which is exiling a non-token creature. So you get, like, you take the biggest creature on the field, you exile it, and then this gets plus X plus Y, where it X is its power and Y is its toughness. So if you exile a 10-10, this becomes a 13-13, and you got rid of one of the creatures. Yeah, that's really... I really like almost every card that has the imprint ability on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really tend to be very good. I would enjoy if they brought that back. However, I can see why it's one of those abilities that they really kind of stopped after the one cycle. Um... Next up, we have a pair of Pognify and Rapid hybridize, hap, uh, Hybridization. There we go. Um, it's just a one mana destroy. They get three threes in exchange. Um, either apes or frog lizards, but both green for whatever reason. Um, I, I really like that they made it a frog lizard. They couldn't just make it one. They had to go with all out. This is going to be a really weird looking creature and it's kind of a scary to have a giant frog lizard man as mm -hmm. a 3-3 three, three. it's yeah. a decent size like a frog would be a 1-1 one, one. but no it's a frog lizard I do now want to try and find the tokens for the frog lizards <laughs> but just yeah, so just I can use them at some point easy 1 mana instant speed removal in blue is going to be good and I think this is the last one in this category that we're going to talk about it's reality shifts um, 2 mana instant exile um, they get to manifest the top card of the library, which if you put a um, instant face down off the top of the library, then they're, it's stuck. Yeah, it's just a two-two. Just, just a two-two for the rest of it. Sorry. And they can't turn it face up. So I mean, even if it's a land and an artifact or enchantment, it's only creatures can be flipped. Yep. So good and good exile. Exile and blues going to be good. So what kind of clone effects? You have that as a separate category. I'm kind of curious yes. to see what you have. Um, so we have the standard clone. Um, it keeps getting outclassed as we keep going through the ages um, by one of the other cards in the deck, Vizier and Many Faces. Um, it's a little harder to cast with double blue, but in this deck it doesn't matter. But it does the same thing. It comes in as a copy, and but it has the ability to come back from the grave. So... But clone is still a classic. Got to go for go with it. Next is of course the great and powerful Rite of Replication. Um, there was actually a time where I got five copies. Ended up with six copies of um, Overa Overa Hel Hellkite that gives you the six six dragon whenever a dragon you control attacks. So I was going to end up with like thirty six thirty six or thirty six 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 dragons because of this card. And ended up just winning the game because of it, making my opponent scoop, which is always the best feeling in blue. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know of many other blue decks that can say, hey, I'm just going to swing at you with this legion of dragons. dragons? Mono red dragons. Yeah. <laughs> and Pretty then last impressive. one is clone legion. Again, you're letting your opponents cheat out big creatures, so you might as well take advantage of it and take a copy of all their creatures. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically... Because of its high mana cost, that's a 9-drop. Uh, realistically, that's going to be the turn you win the game. Yeah. Well, probably not the turn, but the turn after if it sticks, because unless you can give them haste. True. Which uh, this deck doesn't have ways to do. So, what about 
Uh, stealing or theft. What what do you have for that? One of my favorite things to do in Magic, stealing people's stuff. And especially when we're letting them get their big stuff out, it's even better to steal. Um, so first up, we have Memnarch, which can be cheated out. Um, so you like cheat this out, and then a lot of times you can pay the mana cost to gain control of something. You can pay the three, turn it into an artifact, and then four to steal it in the same turn. Which is something that Memnarch generally can't do unless you have infinite mana. And then we have Blatant Thievery. The blue classic, um, steal one thing from each opponent. Plain and simple. I'm actually lightly surprised that you're running Blatant Thievery over Expropriate in this deck. Oh, I have Expropriate in here too. Ah. But that's a... Might be in the win-con section, but... Ah, um, yeah, we do have win-cons coming up next, uh, so let's hear them. Um, so, even if I don't have it, I do want to talk. Expropriate, if you have it, run it. It's going to be an um, amazing card in just about any deck. It's very hard to lose after you've resolved one of those. Um... Mm -hmm. And yeah, it is in the steal, but I almost put it more in the win con because you're at least getting one extra turn off of it, if mm -hmm. not more. Um, so win cons, we have a lot of it is stealing opponent stuff, copying their stuff, or Eldrazi. We have a lot of Eldrazi in the deck. Um, Annihilator really does a lot of work and could almost be included with the target to removal. Um, so, but especially if we have. Um, What's it called? Because we do have the one in the deck that whenever an opponent sacks a permanent, you gain control of it. It's also another theft effect mm -hmm. in the deck. Yeah, that one's especially good with Annihilator stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, so, you have some uh, surprising cards in here. Um, let's talk about... Uh, there is a lockdown in the deck to ferry with Knowledge Pool. Um, it's one of the alternate win cons combo-ish. Um, so with Teferi your opponents can't cast stuff at instant speed knowledge pool forces them to cast stuff at instant speed so you're the only one who can cast stuff they basically have to kill you with what's on board yeah otherwise it, it's a win con via your opponents give up yes your opponents I, can't play the game I, I would say that is one of my favorite things to see resolved not quite my favorite to deal with <laughs> but in the end I, I usually I can accept that that is a nice combo right there. Yeah. Two cards, pretty simple. Class out to fairy, turn before yours. Now for the surprising cards. Um, oh, so first off, um, I've always wanted this card. It always seemed like a lot of fun. It does a lot of work in this deck. Um, it is Dream Halls, which instead of paying the casting cost for a spell of any color, its caster may choose and discard a card that shares at least one color with that spell. Um, so the nice thing about this is we have a ton of card draw and high mana curve. So you need ways to play a bunch of the, bunch of stuff in a turn. So there's going to be turns where you end up with 10 cards in your hand, but you can only cheat one thing in the play and then cast so much stuff. But if you cast this first, you can empty your hand and play all your big stuff in a single turn outside of your Eldorazi. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely can't wait to see a game with Dream Halls. Although, I'm pretty sure I can usually abuse that too. So yeah. that would that just be a fun chaotic. It's a lot of fun. Your opponents can use it too. But the, it's the same as being with Braids. You're building your deck to take advantage of it. Um, so because of that, you should get the most benefit. And what else does it let you do? Um, so next up, we got Show and Tell, which lets you get, get enchantments and which Braids can't do. Um, this is how I cheated out um, Mind's Dilation in mm -hmm. the game. So I played this, got Mind's Dilation out, and really allowed me to come back in that game. Um, so for everything, it's, it's going to let your opponents do the same stuff, but again, you're building the deck to take advantage of it the most. Yeah, you have the most good stuff, so you don't really have to worry too much about what the opponents have, because you have the better general things. And lastly, this has turned into one of my favorite cards. It's Sphinx Ambassador. Um, so if you don't know, it's a Flying Sphinx 5-5. Five five. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you search that player's library for a card. Then that player names a card. And if you search for a creature card that isn't the name card, you may put it onto the battlefield under your control. Then that player shuffles his or her library. So essentially, you're searching through their deck. You're going to pull a creature out. 
And if they then they're it's a guessing game. They have a one in like sixty shot, maybe more, maybe less, depending on where you're at in the game, and how well they know their deck, of guessing the card. If they don't guess it, you get to just put it into play. So again, we're cheating stuff into play with this deck. I can definitely see this deck kind of being or that particular card being abused by maybe someone not knowing their deck. Mm -hmm. Uh because I know there's plenty of people who sometimes they'll either borrow a deck from us or they just built a deck so they don't even know too many of the card names in there. Or doing the pre-con or mm -hmm. something like that. If you This deck doesn't have a way to do it, but if you also give this creature double strike, you should get two triggers because it's doing damage twice. Yeah. Um, so that's fun, but this is how I got the Helvera Hel Hellkite out. I stole it from their deck, put it on the field, on, onto my side, and then kicked replication of it. Um, yeah, single handedly won me the game. And so this is the last um, the last card I want to talk about is a card that actually saved me in one of the matches, and that's Seagate Wreckage. I was just completely stuck on card draw, um, and but I was able to empty my hand. Um, I think I played even uh, Show and Tell when I had it was the only card in my hand just to empty my hand so I could draw the card and get me out of that bad situation. It's one of those cards that you don't think about when you're deck building, but when you need it and you have it, it feels amazing. So if you're not running Seagate Wreckage, um, especially in monocolor decks, there's no reason not to. Um, you, you should have enough ways to make colorless mana to turn it on. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that's definitely a card I see every Boros deck should need, mm -hmm. or mono white, mono red. Because that's, those are two colors that always like to dump out their hands. Just, And this is a deck that, being mono blue, I never thought I would have problems with this. But it it's one of those cards that a lot of times it does nothing but tap for mana. But that's fine. It doesn't come in tapped. Amazing land. Let you draw cards when you need to. Um, so yeah, definitely look at picking this one up for your any of your decks. Okay, so that just about wraps up your Braids deck tech. Um, in addition to this video, I recommend everyone listening should go and check out our video about Brawl and our 100 uh, subscriber giveaway, because by the time this video is posted, we should be about halfway through the, de mm -hmm. the deciding point of... Uh, who's going to receive a pre-release pack of their choice from one of the currently standard playable uh, sets. And see, news like that is why you shouldn't just cut off and close our videos before the end of the video. Watch them all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we tr sometimes make some long ones. Um, other than that, always feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, go ahead and comment if you can uh, what you liked about this deck or ideas that Cody should add to this deck. Um, and if there's a deck that you want to hear us make or try out, uh, let us know and we will see what we can brew with it. Um, other than that, I think that's mostly it. Uh, we have some deck techs and various discussions coming up soon yep so make sure you subscribe hit that bell notification until next time this is commander cafe signing off mm -hmm.